When I heard the word direct experience, I couldn't figure out. I thought that's kind of redundant because the experience should be direct. But later, I start to figure out that had some deeper meaning. Typically, the word like a direct experience, from my experience、uh, point, is that it's about the spiritual realm of things. Truth. How do we grab? How do we connect to the truth? Because our mind, the words, are just a fake news. It's a representation of what we see, and we see it's only a portion of the reality because the apple may look red, but it may be square or you know, an elongated shape or with little dots and the taste. So, the reality has the elements of all of those mixed together. But the words can only explain like a one dimensional view of the reality from one aspect, like a smell or the taste or the texture or the figure or any of that. So, direct experience is, I start to realize, and this is through the meditation. Meditation I finally got is that、uh, there's no word when you're experiencing things. It's a zone experience. You are one with whatever the situation is, and there's no gap between. There's no gap. There's no between. There's no concept. It's just the absolute state. So. Words are just to capture the element of truth, you know, like a slicing a dimension this way or that way, and look at the color or the taste or the texture or any of those. But it's not the whole of it. But when we communicate, as I do with you now, I'm using words to capture the point. And your take is probably different from my. Intention because the meaning of what, how you associate the meaning of what, may be quite different from the way I look at it. Or, like the case of the direct experience, you may not know what's, what's the meaning of it. But if you have done some meditation or sports or art or whatever, you may have the experience of the zone. And there's a whole different dimension in there. And that to me is to characterize the gap between <clears throat> the reality of what it is to the image or the words that bring out the image of what it is. So, obviously, there's lots of difficulties that we face in living life. So, on one dimension, I won't ask. To understand it and then find a way so that we can communicate better. Just to use one example, in Zen training, they live together, go through all the exercises, the meditation, Samu working in the garden or you know, whatever the necessary things you need to do, and then eat together and listen to the sutra or read the sutra and any of those stuff. So, that through that experience, they start to connect to each other at a different dimension than what you may sense in a big city when you're passing by or the people you see in the train sitting together but not relating. So, it's kind of like an animalistic sense of connection among us that may go beyond the world when we talk about the direct experience. So, back to the reason why I'm talking about it. Because, because of the gap between words and the reality, what I'm saying is that、uh, if we use our mind, use the word with our mind, what we are doing is just slicing the reality in some dimension. And therefore, we are playing with that thought, the mindful p 
play of what the reality could be or would be and should be. But that's way off from probably the reality because you may not have synthesized the whole viewpoint to capture the example of the apple. So the simple point of the discussion is that be careful about the words, be careful about how we use the mind to play with the words and think that's the reality. And if you start to play the game, the, the monkey mind would start to tangle up everything and convolute it and we can communicate within ourselves and across. So we have to have this common experience that we can share in our relationship with others as well as within ourselves to see what we're doing in the mind but there's a ultimate reality existing no connection to the mind so there's a gap between what's in the mind and to the reality right and this is a point Kitaro Nishika um, Nishida is the Japanese philosopher a good friend of Daisetsu Suzuki he used the word zettai mujun no jiko doi zettai absolute mujun uh, paradox absolute paradox of uh, jiko doi it's jiko the self do it's, it's identifying as one so absolute paradox yet identified as one meaning the paradox is resolved with that identification. Identification of knowing what the mind is doing and what the reality is, and know that two dimensions that is synthesized or the gap bridged. Therefore, you are not fooled around by the mind because mind can generate lots of ideas imagination, what should, could, would, all of that. And we get into the world as if that's the reality. And you're playing with the image of the reality, not the reality itself, away from what is happening. And of course, the mind has the ability to predict, postulate what the future could be. So that's the benefit you can, we can, utilize to live a life, but make sure that don't overuse it or used by the mind and the words away from the reality of what's going on. And just think that it's the only situation and even think that's the reality. Because your mind is so occupied, you don't think anything else, but you're like floating in the air, in the clouds, imagination, fake in the mind. And you get trapped, caught up in it. So how do you get out of it? So that you're sane. And the way to get out of it is a direct experience of what it is. And if you can connect to that and bring out in our daily life to process that absolute sense of being, then you have a chance of balancing and bridging the gap and resolving the paradox so that you don't see the image as something absolute, but the image is relative, your concept, the ideas, and missing the connection to the root of our being. So I use the word, maybe by using you get lost, and I'm doing my best to use the proper word, <laughs> which is a difficult thing. But the point is, don't be deluded by what the mind says about the reality. Be awake, the nature of what the mind does, by having that direct experience of being, whether it's the sensation in the body, or whatever that you have this awakened sense that what you want to bring into life 
And what is that awakened sense? You may ask the question with words. My answer is, that's when you have the direct experience. And that is again going back to the paradox. Mind and the reality, or you can call it mind and body, because in body is the moment to moment change of what's going on. And that's the good entry point, and that's the sense that you have in the zone experience. In meditation, you may get there, and awakening can come with it. So, those are the imaginative we issue and the possibilities, but without experiencing it, we don't communicate. My word is not connecting to your word. And that's the question for us to hopefully understand who we are and how we communicate. Perhaps through everyone have some direct experience and have some common view, understanding, experience, and then build upon it so that you have some anchoring point, not just within ourselves to not get lost in living life, but with others with certain level of communication. Nature is by itself. Animals communicate because that's the only way. The human developed the words and used that as a channel of communication. But as much as there's a language, like a body language, there's much more than the word. Intention, the spirit, energy level, experience base, all of that. So let's be mindful about this point. Mindful meaning be aware not full of mind, <laughs> you don't want that. Empty mind is a better way. And uh, in doing so, we may find this life quite interesting, amazing, magical. And if we have that sense, there's some energy flowing, and then this word, direct experience, and the idea behind it may be communicate it better. Thank you.